Howdy. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to perfectly set up our free body diagrams in Sum of Forces. Now, this is going to be more of an introductory, and it's going to be a three-part series dealing with forces and free body diagrams. And in this first part, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our free body diagrams, our setups, our Sum of Forces are perfect. Because if you can get those perfect, then I don't care what type of question they ask, you'll be able to answer anything, okay? Now, there are going to be four forces that you're always going to be looking out for. Your first force is gravity. And gravity, the force of gravity, is m times g. And gravity is always going to be straight down, okay? So your force of gravity will be straight down. Your normal force, which we'll call n, is always going to be perpendicular to the surface. What the normal force is, the normal force is the force the surface pushes up against you. Okay? Friction, the force of friction is always going to be mu times n. And what this will always be, this direction, it will always be in the direction, I guess, well, let's do it this way, the opposite direction, the opposite direction of motion. Okay, basically it opposes motion. Okay, that's going to be the direction in which you put your friction arrow, I guess. And then any external forces, they could be forces that are being pushed, forces that are being pulled, tensions on a rope, things like that. You look for any external forces, okay? So we're going to do three examples. We're going to do, we're going to set up three free body diagrams as well as their sum of forces, okay? Now, Let's go ahead and set up this free body diagram. So what, I've, what I have here is I have a block, and I have a force being pulled at a certain angle. The floor has a friction, we'll call it mu, and it is accelerating to the right. And what I want to do is set up the free body diagram. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our free body diagram. And we're going to go through this checklist, okay? Let's go through this checklist. First off, gravity. Gravity is always straight down, and so we're going to have mg straight down. Your normal force is perpendicular to your surface. So if the surface of the floor perpendicular to that, it's going to be straight up. There's my normal force. Friction. Friction is in the opposite direction of motion. So since I'm pulling it to the right and it's accelerating to the right, friction, mu times n, will be pointed to the left. Finally, you look for any external forces. And I have this force f that's being pulled up, okay, at a certain angle. At this point, what you need to do, once you have your free body diagram set up, is you need to determine what your best axis is, okay? And what I like to do, I like to set the positive x direction, usually in the direction of motion, in the direction of my acceleration. So the way you need to set up your axis in this case, well, you don't need to set it up. The best way to set it up is to where your positive x-axis is directly to the right and then positive y is going to be straight up and down. The reason I'm doing this is for a couple of reasons. One, acceleration is directly to the right, so there's that. Also, two, notice how three of my forces are already in the direction of this axis. That's cool. That means I only need to do geometry to one of these forces, okay, and that's this F. Because notice how F is at an angle to this axis. So what I need to do is I need to find the X and the Y components on F. And so the X component of F, this right here, notice how this X component's adjacent to my angle. So this is going to be F cosine theta. And then the Y component of F is opposite my angle and so it's going to be f sine theta. And now what I have is I have every force in the direction of my axis. And so when you do sum of forces in the x and y, everything is revolved around this axis. So let's do sum of forces in the x direction. The first thing you need to ask yourself is, am I accelerating or am I not? If you are accelerating, if you're accelerating, your sum of forces is going to equal m times a. If you're not accelerating, you're going to set your sum of forces equal to zero. So it's always your first question. Am I accelerating in the x direction? Well, yeah, I am. And so, this is equal to m times a. And what this is going to be equal to, now all i got to do, if you set this up correctly, man, just look at your, uh, look at your arrows. Let's see what arrows are pointed in the x direction. 
We'll take a look at this f cosine theta. f cosine theta is going in the positive x direction, so I'll have a positive f cosine theta. And uh, I've got this mu times n, mu times n going in the negative x direction, so minus mu times n. And that's it. Those are the only arrows that I have going in the x direction. Now let's do sum of forces in the y direction. You need to ask yourself, am I accelerating in the y direction? Well, no, you're not. You're only moving in the x direction. And so sum of forces in the y, that's zero. And now that I have that, let's look at my arrows. Well, notice how I have this normal force right here. This normal force is going in the positive y direction. <laughs> normal force is going in the positive y direction, so it's a positive n. I also have this f sine theta. This f sine theta is also going in the positive y direction, so I'm going to go plus f sine theta. But check out mg. mg is going in the negative y direction. So you need to do negative mg. And this is how you're going to set up your free body diagram along with its corresponding sum of forces. Now here's the cool thing about these type of problems. After you get to this point, notice how I have two equations. What's going to happen is they can ask you a myriad of things. However, you're going to be given two unknowns. And something like this, they may say, hey, find the acceleration. Well, acceleration would be unknown. Your normal force is unknown. The hardest mathematics you have to do after setting up these sum of forces will be a system of equations. Okay, that's literally it. Okay, in our part two and part three, we will actually do the algebra to solve for this. Right now, I just want to make sure that your free body diagrams as well as your sum of forces are perfect. All right, cool. So this was a relatively easy one. Um, let's get a little bit harder, though. Okay, let's get a little bit harder. So let's take a look at this problem right here. So for number two, what I decided to do was I'm going to put a block on a ramp. I've got a force being pulled straight up. That ramp is at an angle, and I've got friction on it. Now what I have here is we have a constant velocity going up the ramp. So keep that in mind when we set up our sum of forces. Now, we first need to set up our free body diagram. So here's my ramp, and there's my block. Okay, once again, let's go through that checklist. I hope you have your checklist out in front of you, because the first thing I said was gravity. And gravity is straight down. Next, I said your normal force. Your normal force is perpendicular to your surface. So because my surface is at an angle, this normal force needs to be perpendicular to that. So there's your normal force. Next was friction. Friction opposes the motion. And so because this uh, block is being pulled up, friction, mu times n, will be down the ramp. And then finally, do I have any external forces? And yeah, I do. I've got this F right here. So I'm going to have F going up the ramp. Okay. Once we set up our free body diagram, we need to determine an axis. And I'm going to tilt my axis this time. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the positive x-axis parallel to the ramp and going up. Because that's the direction of my motion. And so Y, of course, is perpendicular to your X. And another reason that I chose that, notice how F, your normal and your friction are all in the direction of your axis, which is cool. That means I only need to do geometry to one force, to mg. Now, um, if you have an angle right here, if you do do a little bit of geometry, this angle of the ramp will always be right there. Okay, The angle of the ramp, whenever setting these up, will always be right here. Okay, and so what I need to do is figure out the components of mg, and this y component of mg is adjacent to my angle, and because this is adjacent to my angle, this is going to be mg cosine theta, and then the x component of mg, notice how that's opposite my angle, because it's opposite my angle, this is going to be mg sine theta. And now what I have is I have every force in the direction of my axis. So let's go ahead and set up my sum of forces. Sum of forces in the x direction. First thing, am I accelerating? No. Okay. Just because you're moving doesn't mean you're accelerating. If you're going at a constant velocity, your acceleration is zero. 
Okay? And so now that I've determined that, now you look at your arrows. Well, check this. The F is going in the positive X direction, so a positive F. Okay? But this mu times N, this is going in the negative direction of my axis. So I'm going to have minus mu times N. I also have this mg sine theta moving in the negative um, X direction. So I've got a negative mg sine theta. And so there's our sum of forces in the x direction. And as for sum of forces in the y direction, once again, ask yourself, am I accelerating in the y direction? Well, no, I'm not. It's not going in this direction, right? And so we know that's zero. And so now just look at your arrows. You've got an n, your normal force, that's going in the positive y. And then you've got this mg cosine theta that's going in the negative y. So minus mg cosine theta. And that's how you do the second one. That's how you deal with ones on ramps, okay? So, now that we've done one on a flat surface, now that we've done one on a ramp, man, let's combine the two and see what happens. So now what I've got is I've got this mass on a ramp, and uh, let's say this M1 is much larger than M2, so we're definitely going to be accelerating down. It's going to be at some angle, and let's put different frictions, right? On this part of the ramp, we have some mu1. On this part of the ramp, we have some mu2. And uh, this is going to be a frictionless pulley, and it's accelerating, of course, down. Whenever you have multiple objects, what you're going to do is do a separate free body diagram and sum of forces for each object individually. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first do a free body diagram on M1 and the sum of forces on M1. Then, I'm going to do a free body diagram and sum of forces on M2, independent of this first one. So, let's do the free body diagram first for M1. If I want to do the free body diagram for M1, so we have our ramp, we have M1. Okay. So first is gravity. Gravity is straight down of M1g. Next is your normal force. Normal force that's perpendicular to your surface. And we'll call this N1, because there are going to be two different normal forces because you have two different objects. We'll call that N1. Next is friction. Friction opposes motion. This time this block is accelerating down the ramp, which means friction is going to be pointed up. In friction, this is going to be mu1 n1, okay? The uh, coefficient of friction on the ramp times the normal force of that block. And then finally, do I have any external forces? Well, yeah, I do, right? I've got uh, the tension of this rope going up the ramp, and so we'll call that tension T, okay? So now that I have that set up, we need to set up our axis. And because I'm accelerating down the ramp, let's set the positive x-axis down the ramp, and of course, positive y just perpendicular. And I notice that my normal force, my friction, and my tension, they're good. They're all in the same direction of my axis. But the mg is at an angle. And if you remember what I just said, the angle of the ramp, that theta, is always going to be right there. And so if I want the y component, right, if I want the y component of my mg, it's adjacent to my angle. So it's going to be m1g um, cosine theta. And then the x component, the x component of that's opposite the angle, so it's going to be m1g sine theta. Therefore, when I set up my sum of forces in the x direction, I ask myself, am I accelerating? And I am. So it's going to be m1 times a. And now you look at your arrows. Well, in the positive x direction, I've got this m1g sine theta. I have m1g sine theta. And let's see, I've got a couple of things going in the negative x direction. I have this uh, mu1n1, so minus mu1n1. And I've got this tension, so minus t. Okay? So that's my sum of forces in the x. And sum of forces in the y direction. Am I accelerating the y direction? Well, no, I'm moving in the x direction. You're not going off the ramp, and so that's going to be zero. And now just look at your arrows. I've got N1 pointed in the positive Y, so it'd be N1. And I've got M1G cosine theta pointed in the negative Y. And so I've got minus M1G cosine theta. And what this would be, this is successfully doing the free body diagram and sum of forces for block one. But we have another block, we got M2. And so we need to do this one also individually. 
So let's do the free body diagram as well as the sum of forces for M2. Here's our floor. And there's our block. Okay. First off, go through your checklist again. Step one, gravity. That's straight down. You have M2 times G. Next is your normal force. Your normal force N2 is going to be perpendicular to my surface. Next is friction. And notice that since I'm moving to the left, friction, this mu2 times N2 is pointed to the right. And then I see, do I have any external forces? Which I do. I have the tension of that rope being pulled to the left. Now for my axis, because I'm moving to the left, I'm going to set the positive x-axis like this, positive y straight up. Notice how my axis is different for each one. Because I'm doing each one separately, I'm doing each one individually. And here's a, here's a hint, or I guess a little tip. I don't care how you set up your axis. It's actually, not irrelevant, but it's, it doesn't matter. As long as your mathematics and your geometry agrees with your axis, doesn't matter how you set it up. I'm setting it up, so I have to do the least amount of geometry, but it doesn't make a difference, okay? As long as your math and your geometry and your trig stay consistent with your axis. Okay, anyways, so now that I have that set up, let's go ahead and do our sum of forces. Sum of forces in the x direction. I am accelerating in the x direction, so it's going to be an m2 times a, and now I look at my arrows. I have a T of a tension going to the positive X, so it's T. But I have a friction moving in the negative X, so it's minus mu2 N2. And then some of forces in the Y direction. Um, I'm not accelerating the Y, so that's zero. Now I look at my arrows, and I've got N2 going in the positive Y, and I've got M2G going in the negative Y, so minus M2G. Okay. That's it. And that's how you set up your free body diagrams and sum of forces. And now notice how I have four equations. Chances are when you have four equations, you're going to have four unknowns. And what you'll do is a system of equations. In the next two parts, we'll actually be solving for it. I'll be showing you how to do the mathematics, but that's as hard as it gets. The last thing that I want to mention before we start the next couple parts is that whenever you have a frictionless pulley, the tension on either side of the pulley are the exact same magnitude. This tension right here, this T, is the exact same magnitude as this T, okay? The tensions on either side of a frictionless pulley will always have the same magnitude. Now in the next exam, when we start getting to torque and things like that, where it's not a frictionless pulley, it rotates, that's gonna be different, but we'll get there when we get there. For right now, they'll have the same magnitude. So, Go ahead, join me in the next two parts. We'll do full-fledged problems, and we'll do the algebra and the mathematics to actually solve for what we're looking for.